Yeah. Crypto gang in the building. We official. It's that 2023 flow. Shout out to all my brothers in the crypto gang. It goes like this. Hey yo, better recognize the name. Yo, we that crypto gang. This is the type of shit that bangs. Let's go insane. Better recognize the name. Yo, we be that crypto gang. This is the type of that bangs. What you know about that though? Duh. Cryptocurrency, yo, that blockchain flow. flow. You just wanna hate cause they can't relate. They came in late, they can't participate. Let me get this shit straight. We cooking up a plate. Paper hand niggas on the coals getting raped. Yeah, down the hand niggas by them coins, we can stay. We the crypto gang, know the real from the fake. Yo, my people's cop that ETH and that algo. We wait till the price goes down, no. We got the stable coins in the stack. We waiting to move so that the squad get racked. You others niggas need to relax. That fiat currency is whack. Put that old shit in the back. We on track to revolutionize that. Uh, XRP, my nigga, you should buy that uh, BTC, the cold wallet getting fat yo, Then you see, we spitting nothing but facts yo, Bring that heat, these 20 niggas can't match uh, We on that new sh so they can't hang We spitting them flames like it's propane You better recognize the name Yo, my squad, we be the crypto gang Better recognize the name Yo, we be that crypto gang This is the type of shit that bangs Having it so insane Better recognize the name Yo, we be that crypto gang This is the type of shit that bangs you gotta understand what we talking about Paper money ain't a flex, what you talking about? Knowledge is the thing you can't measure Make, make more dough by pleasure Disagree, gotta check your mental Invest in yourself, God, that's essential We diversified, a purse to pot A worth is why we serve the sky I bought another coin when it rolled out If it went to the bottom, I'ma hold out I'ma get that back, homie, no doubt Feeling lucky is funny, I double the money The morning with Sunny, hold your honey Cause you might wanna creep with a real boss Throw your cash in the air, but you're still lost It's not a big surprise to centralize and improvise to get the highs I send the rise. I hate dealing with the pains cause it's still trite While I got you holding on for dear life Hating on the king? Calm that I get that Smart contract, smart combat Making my wallet fat so bear witness Fucking with that crypto Bought another coin, that's a real definition I'm minding my business Get this, get this Better recognize the name Yeah, we be that crypto gang This the type of shit that bangs Let's go insane Better recognize the name Yo, we be that crypto gang This the type of shit that bangs in the know. No. Texting all these dudes like it's gas fees, yo. No. Got my old coin on the D5 flow. flow. Getting all these coins at an all time low. low. And for these corny niggas talking FOMO. FOMO. These niggas on my no, no homo. homo. I'ma break it down cause you're slow though. Friend on my team is a no go. We talking about winning, you a no show. We moving real time, you a slow mo. Run up in your spot, you like oh no. You ain't got no bread, call them no dough. Wait. They can't handle the weight or anticipate. Whether proof of work or it's proof of stake. If the market's going down, you can pitch your late. This is for my niggas in the 50 states Buying LTC or that BTC or that XRP or that BNB Yo, these other dudes, they ain't seeing me With the XLM or that TRX My niggas cop that man and they grab that vet Yo, you getting slapped for your disrespect We just getting started, we ain't finished yet You niggas in pain, grab the perfect set With my squad, better come correct, let's go With my squad, better come correct, let's go Go, 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 go. My score better come correct. Let's go. go, go, go. Gentlemen, gentlemen, put a one in the chat if you hear me loud and clear. Let's get this started, gentlemen. Let's go. You heard the song, man. What you know about that, though? Cryptocurrency. Yo, that blockchain flow. You hear me, Mab? You hear me, C Boogie? Rome Spencer, Killer Cam, Mike McKinney. Let's go, World Blockchain Capital. Y'all know, y'all hear it. What you know about that, though? Let's go. Cryptocurrency. Yo, that blockchain flow. Dudes want to hate, but they can't relate. They came in late. They can't participate. 
Let's go, man. We in here. We in here. Shout out to the crypto gang. Appreciate you guys coming through. Appreciate the support as always. Let's go, family. Yeah, man. So um, tomorrow I will be in NYC. Shout out to all my brothers watching from NYC. I will be in NYC tomorrow. So um, I'm going to be running around. I got to see the family. I got to go see my mama. You know, got to gotta say goodbye to my mama before I go ahead and take the trip out to Thailand for good. So shout out to everybody in NYC. I'll be out there and seeing what you guys been going through with this damn, you know, illegal immigration bull-ish sponsored by the United States government. Let's go, right? So I'll be out there tomorrow seeing my mama and uh, saying goodbye to my mama. And uh, that, that is what it is, man. Listen. You guys, man, y'all are going to be so fucking rich. Just had to say that, man. You guys, wow, this is crazy. So y'all know we about to get into that, man. But before we do, I'm about to make a, a couple of you dudes mad, man. About to make a couple of y'all dudes mad real quick. We got to have this conversation, man. We got to have this conversation. Guys, can we just admit? Can we just can we just all admit, man? Can we just all admit that your boy, right? That your boy, hold on, let me bring it up. Your boy LeBron James. Can we just admit that your the old man has to go? It's over. Huh? Let's go. Let's go. Can we just admit that your boy? Is is at his end? Can we just admit that your man has to let it go? Can we just admit that uh 20 years is enough? Can we just can we can we admit that? Can we admit that 20 years is enough? This guy gotta go. Stop chasing that ghost in Chicago. You tried, but you couldn't catch him. Let him go, man. Let him go. Let's go. Nah. You, nah, CC, it ain't Andre Davis, cause that dude is a problem on that court, bro. Andre Davis be putting in that work. Can we just admit that your man has to go? Listen, your man, look at what, look at the jersey he wearing. He's chasing that ghost, man, in Chicago. He can't let that two three go. He can't let it go, man. Let's go. You you chasing that ghost? It's over, bro. It's over. Joe Kick, or whatever his name is, he got your number. He was serving y'all up, man. He was serving y'all up. I ain't going to say it's Anthony Davis, man. Shout out to Anthony Davis. I think that dude um, was the reason they got as far as they did last season. But fam, this dude got to go, man. It's over. You had your time. You had your 20 years. It's over, bro. You made you, made, you a billionaire. You you did what you came to do. Let it go, man. It's over. It's over. It's a wrap, bro. He don't want to let it go. He don't want to let it go. He don't want to let it go. It's crazy, but, you know, he's chasing a ghost. Can we just, listen, your man is not the dude that he claims to be. I'm talking to you, Andrew Baker, if you're listening. Your man is not the dude. That he claims to be, right? Pretty much two of his championships come from joining another dude's team. He had to join another dude's team to get those two championships. And he has another one that was in the bubble, which basically accounts for nothing, right? So my thing is, fam, he's not that dude. His time is over. He didn't make it. It's over. That's all I'm saying. Like, and, and, you know, let, let me know, man. Let me know if if I'm, uh, if I'm, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying your man had his 20 years. He had to join another dude's team to get two of his rings. Then he got one in a bubble, which basically accounts for nothing. 
So the only real one he got was in the place that he abandoned, Cleveland, right? And, and, and he, I think this dude wants to keep playing because he knows that that's his history. He knows that that's all that's going to be on his legacy. Like, yeah, uh, you got four rings, but two of them come from you joining another dude's team. You had to join another dude's team to get the first two. And then you got one that was in the bubble, which is like, eh, you got that in the bubble, though. Like, you know, and then, of course, the other one that he got, that was probably the only real one that he got, which was in Cleveland, the place that he originally abandoned. But those two rings is, listen, you had to join another dude's team. That was Dwayne Wade's team. You was just a dude on the side. Dwayne Wade was the leader of that team. You basically was a helper. So I'm just, I don't know. Let me know if I'm talking crazy, son. Let me know if I'm talking crazy. You know, your man been to the final dance. Your man been to the final dance 10 times. And he lost six times. That's all I'm saying. This is your man's legacy. We just got to admit his time is done. It's over. It's time to give it up. You tried to chase the ghosts. That's it. Y'all want to know how y'all know that this man has never reached the height? You know what I'm saying? Huh? Y'all want to know how y'all know that this man was never going to reach Michael Jordan's heights? Because this man called himself the GOAT, man. He called himself the GOAT. You know, listen, when you're insecure, right, you will say that you're the GOAT. You know, because the bottom line is other people will call you that. You don't call yourself that. The moment you call yourself the GOAT, it's over. What you talk about, Angel Musa Perez? What you mean I'm wilding? It, it, let me know if I'm wrong. LeBron got his first two rings basically being a helper on Dwayne Wade's team. Is that true or false? Just let me know in the, in the chat. He was not the leader of the Heat. Dwayne Wade was. Is that true or false? Let me know. Let me know, man. Let me know. If I'm wrong, let me know. That was Dwayne Wade's team. He came and he was a helper. He was a sidekick. Is that true? Oh, so he so he he was already on the heat and 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 Dwayne Wade joined the team. That's what you're saying? Whose team was it? Whose team was it? Let me know. Whose team who was running that team? Was it Dwayne Wade or LeBron James? Did LeBron have to transfer to that team or was he already there? You know what I'm saying? He had to join another dude's team, right? And then he won a championship in a bubble. And I was like, I was who was watching that anyway? Like, it was a bubble championship. Like, what what you gonna do with that? You know? Um, you know, basically, your man's whole <laughs> your man's whole legacy is is manufactured, bro. We got to be real about it. Look, Joe Kick killed him the other night. He killed him the other night. And that's just a preview of what you can see for the rest of the season, bro. It's over, man. This guy got to let it go. Listen, he had a great career. It's time to it's time to go now. It's time to go. That's it. That is it. So that's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted to say about your mans. Right? That's all I wanted to say about your mans, but it's over, man. So let's get into this, man. Let's go ahead. Let's get into it. Right? Look, Iman Perry said, Joy career was manufactured. He won all of his championships on the same team. And every time he went to the dance, he won. That's all I got to say about that. Um, That's all I got to say about that. Let's go. Don't be mad though. Don't be mad because your man's career is dying. Don't be mad because it's over for him. It's time for him to go sit down. Listen, anybody who has to call themselves the GOAT is not the GOAT, man. Anybody that calls themselves the GOAT is not the GOAT. You ain't never heard Joy and say he was the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who has to call themselves the GOAT 
is not the GOAT. That's all I'm saying. Nah, he couldn't win in Washington. You know why? Because he was old, man, like your man LeBron is right now. He couldn't win in Washington because he was old, like LeBron is right now. It's time to go, fam. It's time to sit down. It's over. Game's over. All right? Look, knees dust like, Joey, shoes are trash. Oh, so you like them new LeBrons. Hold on. Because y'all was hating on my on my rock joints, right? Let's 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 look at your, your LeBrons, bro. Let's 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 look at your LeBron's new shoes. Let's look at those. Let's look at those, man. Let's go ahead and look at LeBron's new shoes. All right, here we go. So this is what your man LeBron is dropping. This is what he wants you to buy, guys. Here you go. Look, look at your man LeBron's shoes. Tell me these don't look like nurse shoes. These don't look like nurse shoes right here. You 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 gonna be you gonna be styling and profiling in those, huh? You gonna be out there styling and profiling and wilding in those, huh? The girls gonna be all over you with those, huh? Y'all gonna be out there, you know, rocking and all of that. You trying to tell me that you listen? You trying to tell me this is popping, son? Huh? You trying to tell me these are popping? You trying to tell me, yeah, I'm gonna spend two hundred on that. That's what you're trying to tell me, son? Look at the back. What the fuck is this, bro? What is this? Who made these? Whose man's is this, son? Come on, man. Come on. This shit, this what your man wearing, son? No, no, no. This the even. These are even worse. Look at this shit. Jesus Christ. Who made these? Who made these, son? Who made these? Shout out to Nine Eat the Man. He said, Jordan retired for two years, came back, and won three back to back. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. You speaking facts, Nine Eat the Man. Let's go, man. This this shit what your man is, is calling hot right now. This is what your man think is hot in the street. Y'all about to spend 200 on these? Y'all, y'all about to drop that 200 to wear these? Come on, fam. Come on. What you say about my joints, kid? Look, 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 look at this shit, man. Look at this shit, man. These are nurse shoes. This dude got y'all out here wearing nurse shoes. Now, guys, y'all think this is going to sell out? <clears throat> y'all think this going to sell out? Huh? Y'all think these going to sell out? Y'all think the kids going to be lined up around the block for these shits right here? Huh? I'm a sneakerhead. I love kicks, and I wouldn't be caught dead in this shit. Look at this. What the fuck is this, bro? This what your man is making. Look, it's listen. These sneakers are a clear understanding of that's it. The game's over. Your time is done. That's it. All right. So I, I'm sorry. I had to. I had to mess with y'all, man. I had to mess with y'all, man. Let's get this thing started, gentlemen. Gentlemen. You are going to be fucking rich. Put a fire emoji in the chat if you believe that, if you understand that, if you recognize that, man. Let's go. Put a fire emoji in this bitch if you know that we about to win this fucking game, that it's over. Everything that we have prophesied is here at this very moment. Put a fire emoji in the chat if you understand that they tried to stop us, family. They tried to keep us from winning. They tried every trick in the book. You know what? You want to know what's crazy, KC? You want to know what's crazy? World Blockchain, Israel Young Lion, Mab 1914, Gerald Burge. These bastards had everything at their disposal. Universal Black, they had the media at their disposal. They had social media at their disposal. LaKendrick Dixon, they had uh, what YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all of these different things at their disposal. 
They have the news to give you misinformation and false information. They even manipulated the crypto market. They did everything in their fucking power to convince you that you were in a sinking ship and you should sell your crypto immediately. But here we are. After all that time, we still here. We still focused. This is what it is, right? Let's go. This is what it is, gentlemen. This is what we have been waiting for. This is the very moment. Let's go. James Mitchell says, sorry, crypto gang. I'm not in the basketball. I'm all into old school American muscle cars. I hear you, bro. He says, Mopar or no car. I hear you, bro. Shout out to you, man. Everybody got their vices, man. Everybody got the things that drive them crazy. Let's go, family. But you about to be able to buy all the muscle cars you desire, family. Because this crypto shit is on its way to exploding, bro. We are on our way to winning this game. Let's go. We are on our way to basically changing our lives and basically building that financial freedom. And gentlemen, everybody tried to get us off this track. Come on, man. Y'all seen these motherfucking fake ass gurus and so-called red pillars and coach, you know, game coaches and all of that bullshit, dating coaches and all that dumb shit that was out there trying to keep you distracted from this purpose, from this very moment. And here we are getting ready for spot Bitcoin ETFs. We getting ready for Ethereum ETFs. And we waiting for the Bitcoin halving. And gentlemen, people's tone is a little different now. People want to talk differently now. Now that we are on the horizon of one of the greatest runs in the history of crypto, now we are watching one of the greatest possible starts to one of the greatest runs in crypto. Gentlemen, everybody wants to talk a little differently now. Now, all of a sudden, people are sitting and come trying to come to the front and say, I knew it all along. I knew this was going to happen after three years of people on Fox News and and um, CNBC and Bloomberg television telling you, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. Crypto is a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. You need to get out. All of those centralized, centralized exchanges went down. And what did they say? I told you, you need to get out. That's what they had for us. Why? Because they know that what's going to happen next is going to change. It's going to change your entire fucking life. You are going to be financially free. You will never have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck after what we have done here. Man, put a fire emoji if y'all feel what I'm saying in this bitch tonight, man. Let's go. Texas tanker, yanker in the building. He said, if crypto is global, why everyone waiting on the USA to decide whether it can run or not? Gentlemen, it is because it is global. The things that they have done to basically um, undermining, because Texas Tanker Yanka, make no mistake about it, if it was not for the United States doing the little bullshit it does to manipulate the markets, Texas Tanker Yanka, you might see a hundred thousand uh, dollar Bitcoin right now. It might be on its way to two hundred thousand. Texas uh, Texas Tanker Yanka, the the crypto market was not down. It was manipulated and forced down by the criminality of this place. We know that for sure because 
basically during the Sam Bankman free trial, that chick, Carolyn or whatever her name is, that was getting smashed in orgies with him, she admitted as much. We would do that bullshit that they do on the stock market. We would sell Bitcoin back and forth to make the price go down. So that is what it is. And keep this in mind, Texas Tanker Yanker, nobody gives a fuck about the United States, right? It's going to run regardless. That's why all of these other countries in El Salvador and all of these different countries, they buy as much crypto, as much Bitcoin as they can get their hands on. They don't give a fuck about the United States. Look at all of those projects that's going to Africa. You think they're waiting on the United States? Nobody gives a fuck about them, Texas Tanker Yanka. As a matter of fact, the bottom line for the U.S. is they either get on or get out of the way. You either part of it or you in the background. What's happening with the U.S. is they're trying to figure out a way to fuck you over, Texas Tanker Yanka, because they know they can't stop crypto. They can't stop that. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to stop you. So they're going to try to figure out a way to keep you from getting in. They're going to try to figure out a way to cut you with taxes. They're going to try to tax you to death. Y'all heard Janet Yellen say, listen, we need to be taxing unrealized gains in crypto. Put a fire emoji if y'all remember that. This old ass chick say, we need to tax unrealized gains. They're desperate, family. It's over. They either get down with this shit or they get left behind. But nobody's waiting for them. Don't get it confused, Texas Tanker Yanker. Don't get it confused. Nobody's waiting for them. They are basically trying to figure out a way how to control the game, and they're not successful in that because the only power the United States ever had was the U.S. dollar. That was the only power that they ever had. So when you didn't want to listen to them and when you wasn't feeling them, they dropped sanctions on you. You can't use our money, right? Well, now that day is dying because here comes bricks and here comes digital currency. What now? What do you have to use against them? Please don't say nuclear weapons because there's a lot of com countries that got nuclear weapons. So their destruction is mutually assured. So what do you have now? Nah, you have nothing. You either go along to get along or get the fuck out the way. That's your only chances. Look, you see the United States, the spread itself thin. It's, all, it's everywhere now. They in the Middle East. They over here in Ukraine. They over here worrying about what's happening in Palestine and Israel and shit like that. How many fucking soldiers they got? We know it's not a lot because the kids are not going into the armed services anymore. And the ones that's in there are overweight. Who's waiting for the U.S.? Nobody's waiting for them, bro. Bottom line, they trying to live off of their past victories. They trying to be that old bitch in the club. And nobody gives a fuck, man. Nobody cares. I'm going to tell you wh how we know that's true. Because so many dudes are trying to walk away from being working slaves. Dudes either want to get into remote work. They want to get into... um digital currency, they want to get into uh, the digital economy, anything to get away from that bullshit, get you a W-2 job, right? Exactly, brother from down under. They keep talking about drafting women now. Ladies, welcome to equality. Welcome. This is what you wanted. You wanted to be equal? Welcome, right? No, I bet you they never imagined that. They came in the game talking about, oh, we want to be treated like everybody else. Well, here you go. Here you go. Because now they desperate. They talking about drafting you guys. So now, welcome to equality, right? So you are definitely speaking facts. Let's go. But gentlemen, they tried to fucking stop us, man. They tried to prevent us from getting into this game. They tried to prevent us from winning. 
They spent three years trying to convince us. And they put a bunch of bullshit on this social media. All they did was try to fill your heads with, oh, you know, women. Focus on women. Oh, they out of control. They that. Man, I don't give a fuck about none of that, man. I basically focused on the money. So all them content creators y'all was watching got these bitches sitting in the studio and da 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 trying to block you from paying attention to what's important. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, if anybody took some time to say, listen, I don't have a problem with dudes getting their hustle on, right? So if, you're, if your strong point is talking about these 304s, that's fine. But if you don't take a, a, a minute to throw crypto plus passports equals freedom in your thing, then you are fucking worthless to us. We can't use you for anything. If you spend all your time talking about how these chicks are not acting right, but you don't tell the brothers, yo, y'all need to look into these crypto, you need to look into crypto and investing and passports and stuff like that, then what good are you? What good are you? If you spend all day worrying about what these 304s are doing, if you spend your day distracting men with this, then you are not for them. You are trying to make sure that they stay in their predicament while you use their super chats and get, uh, cash apps to get out of yours. And that's what dudes have been doing. Man, listen. Let's go. We speaking facts tonight, man. Listen, let me show you what these bastards was doing, man. Hold on one second. First of all, we deal in reality, right? We know that the government is working against us. They're not for us. They want us in poverty because that is their strength. And to prove that to you, I want you to see this right here. Nah, you know what, um, brother from down under? It's not even about the 304s, right? Because they're doing what they're supposed to do, right? Um, that's why we don't get angry at 304s. That's why we don't get angry at BAWs, right? We can have spirited conversations about them, but we don't get angry at them. We don't get mad at them. Why? Because they're doing what they're supposed to do. You know what they're doing? They're chasing the individuals who show the most strength who exude the most power, who have the most resources. That's what they're built to do, right? But men are designed to build and create. So if you're spending all your time worrying about why they're doing what they're doing, then you are completely off your purpose. That's why I don't ascribe to or listen to red pill content. That's why I don't support it. That's why I don't condone it. Because if all day you're talking about what they're doing, you're basically getting mad at them for what they do. Chicks are attracted to strength. Tricks, chicks are attracted to power. They're attracted to resources. They're attracted to an abundance. So the government came through and said, we're going to give y'all free money. They were attracted to that. They like the bad boys. They doing crime and getting money, fast money. They scammers and shit like that. They're attracted to that. So we know that for a fact. You don't get mad at them for being who they are. You're supposed to understand them. You're supposed to understand them. And then you're supposed to move accordingly. So if you're sitting here, if you're sitting in YouTube land or social media land mad at some chick because she is who she is, then you are a fucking loser. You're mad at her for doing what she's supposed to do. I'm not mad at a chick for doing what she's supposed to do, but I will remind her that I understand what it is. I will remind her that I know you don't love me. You just here for the money. You're just here for what I can offer you. And if somebody better comes along, you out of here. That doesn't make me mad at her. I just understand. So I'm not getting invested in you because I know what it is. And guess what, guys? That applies to all women all around the world, in every country, in every city, every village. Not just the United States. 
So when you go to Thailand and Vietnam and and uh, go to various parts of Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, you go to um, Rio or Colombia or whatever, they're all the same as far as that. They're attracted to power. They are attracted to resources, okay? The reason that they go after American men or men from uh, Europe or whatever like that is because they know that you have much more money than their boyfriend or the dudes there. That's why. And once you understand that, you are winning. I just saved you a whole bunch of hours watching Red Pill content just by saying that. Just by saying that. Bottom line, women are the same everywhere. It's just they have different methods of approach. And it seems that the ladies in South America, various parts of Africa, in Southeast Asia, and some places in Europe, they have a better approach. But they all want the same thing. Do not ever get that twisted. Now, let's go. Why am I talking about you guys going to be incredibly fucking rich? Because the first thing you have to do to understand your path to wealth is understand how your government feels about you. You have to understand what your government thinks of you. Just like with women. You have to understand how a woman feels about you. And you want to know what I love about the government and women? Somebody put a one in the chat if you want to know what I love about the government and women. Put a one in the chat, man. Let's go. Let's go. Put a one in the chat if you want to know. I know y'all going to hit that like button too. I know that. Because if not, I'm going to go ahead and play me some Mortal Kombat and get on out of here. Hit that motherfucking like button. We on fire tonight. I don't give a fuck about the haters in the back that's mad that we getting ready to win and they didn't join. I'm talking to the motherfucking crypto gang. Hit that fucking like button because I'm spitting facts and fire in this bitch. I don't give a fuck about the motherfuckers that's hate watching, that's mad that we getting ready to win and we having this fucking conversation and you can't because you didn't get in when you were supposed to. Fuck them. I don't even give a fuck about the government watching, trying to figure out, well, is he giving them financial advice? No, motherfucker. I'm not. No, I'm not. You can keep watching, though. Fuck you. We don't care. Fuck you. How about that? Right? So like I said, gentlemen, what I love about the government and what I love about women is they let you know how they feel about you. They let you know how they feel about you. Both women and government let you know how they feel about you. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. The United States government lets you know how they feel about you when they bring illegal immigrants to your neighborhood and take over your school so they can sleep and give them a fucking driver's license and a job and let them sleep in hotels on your dime. Give them iPhones. Talk about giving them money or some reparation shit. They let you know how they feel about you. When they take your tax dollars and they give it to Ukraine and they give it to Israel and they drop hundreds of millions of dollars on the floor in Afghanistan, they're letting you know what they think of you. The government is not hiding how they feel about you. When when they're talking about we need Americans to lose their job to get inflation under control knowing that it's going to send a lot of you into poverty. A lot of you are going to be homeless. A lot of you are already struggling. You got multiple jobs. Your bank account is zero or negative. They're showing you how they feel about you. The same is true with women. When you're dating her, but she has social media. 
She's letting you know how she feels about you. When you're dating her and she has a male friend and she tells you, I'm not going to stop being friends with him for you. She's letting you know what she thinks of you. This is why I love the government and women because they don't lie to you. They show you through their actions exactly how they feel about you. Shout out T. Rutledge. What up, family? I ain't seen you in a minute. He says, what's up? Oh, let's go, man. We in fire on. We, yo, 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 yo. Let me check this out. Yo, I'm going to ask y'all one more time, man. I'm going to ask y'all one more time, and then I'm getting off this bitch because I'm going to New York anyway. I'm going to be packing. I don't give a fuck, man. It's 175 motherfuckers in here, and it's only 96 likes. I'm going to ask you one more time, and then I'm getting off this bitch because I could be packing to go see my moms and saying goodbye for my trip. I'm going to ask you one more time to click that motherfucking like button. And I'm not going to ask again. I will just quickly cut this shit off. Let's go. Let's go, man. Hit that motherfucking like button. You trying to tell me it's 77 motherfuckers in here that hate me? Hit that fucking like button. Let's go. We in here, man. So like I said, what I love about the government and women is they let you know how they feel about you. Right? Check this shit out. I want you to see what this man says because he knows. When you know what your government thinks of you, you know how to proceed. Check this shit out. This week... When anti-war protesters confronted her about America's proxy wars, Hillary responded smugly. Frank what, what do you have? Can you please, can you, is can you please make a statement about President Joe Biden's speech? This is a clearly is... warmongering speech. President Joe Biden is calling for $100 billion of funding for Israel, Taiwan, and Ukraine, and we're supposed to just bundle these together and pretend like we're going to rush to World War III and we're all just going to let Hillary Rodham sir, Clinton sir, sit sir, here. You. Okay. I'm yes. sorry. You know, yes. this is not, what, what, this is not no, the way no, to no, have that, a conversation. I'm sorry. If you want my, to have my, a conversation, you're no, welcome to come you, talk to you me can, afterwards. You can sit here. Okay, right. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna you're gonna wait for me, right? I, please, I, I don't. I, I do not believe you. I will you. listen to you and I, do, I will respond. I do to not you. believe you. But Respectfully, right. I do not believe you. In fifty, guys. <clears throat> so you heard what that dude said. He said, "Yo, you giving money to Ukraine? You giving money to Taiwan? You giving money to Israel? Right? You giving money to fucking illegal immigrants? We can add that." What is your government saying about you doing all of that? Basically, they're going to get, they got 80,000 motherfuckers that they just hired with guns to run up in your crib and take what you have, and they're going to give it to Ukraine, to Israel, to Taiwan, um, and, and many other countries. What are they saying to you loud and clear doing that? What are they saying to you? Hmm? What, what is the message that you get from that? Hmm? What's the message? And the Afghans, right? What's the message you get from that? What are they telling you? They're basically saying, fuck you. Just give us your money and fuck you. You know another group of people who talk like that? Y'all want to know another group of, of people that talk like the United States government and says, fuck you, just give me money and then go blow it? Anybody want to put another group that does that, that basically says to you, fuck you, just give me your money and blow it somewhere else? Anybody? Hmm? There you go. There you go. B dubs. B failed, whatever you want to call them, all of them, right? They are basically on some fuck you, give me money. That's why they're so closely connected because they agree on so much. They agree on so much. But you see, my man was like, listen, 
Y'all are fucking warmongering. Y'all stealing our tax dollars. And that's exactly what she was trying to do. She trying to justify going over there to Israel and starting some shit over there. Going over to Ukraine. And the bottom line is you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. Right? That's what's going on out here. Right? But gentlemen, what are they trying to do? They're trying to keep you from being what you are already on your way to being. Fucking rich, man. Check this shit out, man. Listen to this dumb shit right here. This is what we have been bombarded with for over three years. And look at this last ditch protect the uh pathetic last ditch pathetic basically push to try to desperately get you out of your positions. Check this out, guys. What do you think? Is a spot ETF approval a given? Well, thank you for having me. And no, it's not. Uh, Gary Gensler and the SEC have done a very good job of really trying to regulate uh, with the existing statutes uh, how Bitcoin and other different kinds of coins are, be are being regulated here. They have not had anything where they've let them onto a securities exchange yet, which is what you're talking about. There are, there are coins on the commodities exchange because the regulatory scheme over there is different. So I think for them to let one on to a ex uh, securities exchange, which they regulate as opposed to the commodity exchanges, uh, is going to be a very difficult lift. And if it does happen, it's I would expect it's going to take a while and there's going to be a fair amount of regulation written around it so that they can guard against the kinds of things that happen with some some of these coins. Now, what's interesting about this too is some of the. So basically, this guy is talking to Middle America, right? He is basically sending a dog whistle to tell them not to get any, despite the fact that BlackRock, that Grayscale, that Invesco, that Fidelity, that Ark Invest, and all these other companies are fighting so hard against the SEC. We know that Grayscale sued um, the SEC to get pretty much get, uh, you know, their, their joint approved. So we know that they are fighting hard to get into this game, but he's saying, despite what you see, pay attention to him. Now check out the next thing this dude said. Pushback you've seen from the SEC has to do with safety and security around Bitcoin itself. If you think about the SEC's uh, approving or not approving a new structure here, is it safer to buy Bitcoin under the ETF wrapper or not, given how much the structure has changed going into this process? If, if it's all wrapped up into, a, into another kind of security or commodity, it may give you some additional safety, but still at base root, if what you're looking at is a, a commodity like Bitcoin, which is really sort of, remember, remember that these things were brought out and the idea of them was get off the grid. They didn't want the SEC, they didn't want the CFTC, and they want to keep those things as much like that as possible. The problem with that is it creates huge problems. Uh, I understand, like, for example, that Hamas is now financing some of their operations mm -hmm. with these kinds of products. So you might think about that when you want to go think about buying this stuff. So you see that bullshit that he just said? So now he's trying to do what, listen, and this is how we got caught the first time. We were asleep, right? We looked at Bitcoin as a criminal coin because they said they was using it on the Silk Road. And that's how they was using it to buy drugs on the Internet and pay for criminal acts and shit like that. And that's the, what kept us out the first time. They're going to the old playbook with this shit. They're going to the old playbook. Oh, you know terrorist organizations on using it so we got gentlemen put in the chat what is the number one currency that is used to finance terrorism for drugs for crime for all of it what is the number one currency that is being used for that put it in the chat let's go but this piece of shit wants to convince you don't buy crypto don't invest 
It's a crime. Leave it alone. That's what he's trying to tell you. So if you're stupid enough to listen to him, enjoy. Enjoy your poverty. Enjoy your struggle. Enjoy living paycheck to paycheck. Enjoy your two fucking jobs. Enjoy debt collectors calling your house. Enjoy living in the projects. Enjoy living in those dangerous communities if you listen to this old ass bastard. Let's go. T. Rutledge says, oh, you seen my hex up 155% in seven days. Let's go, T. Rutledge. Shout out to you, bro. Let's go, man. Let's go. Appreciate that. Shout out to everybody that's in Hex. Let's go. So y'all see in the chat, the number one currency used for crime and criminal activity all over the world would be USD, right? That is the number one currency currently being used all around the world, right? Let's go. That is the number one currency that is being used all around the world for crime, right? Let's go. That is the number one. So if you listen to this dude, enjoy your poverty because he is talking bullshit. He's trying to distract you. He's trying to scare you out of your financial freedom, man. But of course, we don't listen to that because we the crypto gang. We don't give a fuck about what they saying. If we did, we would have jumped out a long time ago. Check this out, family. We about to be fucking rich and it's nothing they can do to stop it. And that's what this has always been about. How the fuck do I get these dudes from out of it? Because the bottom line is this right here is a run for the millionaires and the billionaires. This is for the hedge funds, right? This is for the, uh, you know, the, the financial institutions. <clears throat> They're opening this door because this is the new direction. They wanted to get in with you out. That's what it's always been about. How do we get in but get them out? They're mad that we're sitting on the sidelines waiting. Because like that motherfucker Obama told us, rising tides lift all boats. Well, this is the one time that he's very fucking right. Because when they come in, we get to live off of all of that. And they are fucking pissed. They are pissed about that. Let's go. Shout out to Urban Warrior Gaming. He said, this guy Thomas is the type of guy who wears the uh rock shoes <laughs> it's like doo -doo butter. yo y'all gonna leave the rock shoes alone those are my joints i like them bro i don't care what y'all say i like the rock shoes the, i think them joints is dope right um so let's go man let's go let me bring this shit up for you guys hold on check this out I don't know about you, but I'm having some fun with crypto right now. This is a Bitcoin chart. I'm going to actually break down the technical analysis of it all in terms of what's happening on this chart. That green rectangle being broken, a big deal for BTC, but also it's very simply a big deal for, for crypto in general. So even if you don't hold BTC, if you hold altcoins, what's happening right now in the markets is extremely important on the macro. I'm going to break it down. But Guys, y'all see what, what we're talking about here, man. Y'all see what we're talking about? Gentlemen, we love for crypto to run because we, we know when Bitcoin runs, everything else is going with it. When, when Bitcoin inflates, everything inflates with it. That's why everything looks like it's starting to wake up. I asked y'all a question. I asked y'all, do y'all believe the spot ETF race started the bull run? 75% of you say yes. 25% of you say no. Um, I don't know who they are, but let's go. Salaz D says, can you keep your crypto on Exodus after transferred from Coinbase? And is there a difference between holding your crypto on Exodus versus holding it on Trezor Cold Wallet? It's a difference between all of that, Salaz D. The first thing is we do not leave our crypto on centralized exchanges. We don't leave our 
cryptocurrency on Coinbase. We don't leave it on, I don't know, eToro, anything that is a centralized exchange. So what is a centralized exchange? Anything where you have to show a state ID, take a selfie, show proof of address, these are these are centralized exchanges. That means they know who you are. They know your information. We do not keep our cryptocurrency on centralized exchanges because they are dangerous. They can be easily hacked. Um, they you do not control those wallets. Whoever owns Coinbase controls those wallets, so they can freeze your coins. They can hold your coins. They can take your coins. They all of that without your consent. The next thing, what you're talking about with Exodus, yes, you can keep your coins on Exodus. Exodus is the next evolution. You are 100% in charge on Exodus. Why? Because it is a decentralized wallet, right? A decentralized wallet means you are 100% in control of it. Nobody has access to it. Nobody can freeze it. Nobody can close it. Nobody can take funds out of it. And, and it is very difficult to hack into a decentralized wallet. Why? Because decentralized wallets are anonymous. You don't have to give a selfie. You don't have to show proof of address. You don't have to give a state ID for that. So nobody knows that these accounts belong to anybody, right? So they don't know where they're going. They're lost. The only way people have gotten their decentralized wallets hacked is when they gave information, when they gave people access to their decentralized wallet, right? Um, if you're not giving away that, if you're not giving away your seed phrases and stuff, nobody has access to it, right? So this is what we're talking about right now, right? The next one, which is the ultimate safe wallet, is the cold storage wallet right? I like Trezor. Um, I do not like um, the Ledger wallets. I don't like that Bluetooth bullshit. I don't like any of that. So I don't use Ledger wallets. I do like Trezor Model T wallets. And I do like the Clever wallet and things like that, right? That is the ultimate layer of protection because even if somebody has your passwords and your information, if they do not have that a uh, physical device, they do not have access to your things. So that's why I love it, right? So I hope I broke that down. That was that was that was worth me taking time, Salaz D, because I appreciate your um your contribution. So I, I took the time to explain that. Hope that that right there helps you on this journey. So we never keep our stuff on cold storage. Uh, decentral. I'm sorry. We never keep our stuff on centralized wallets. We never keep anything there. We decentralized wallets are the next best thing because there is no identifiers on it. And of course, the greatest protection is cold storage wallets. So decentralized wallets and cold storage wallets are the best thing you can be a part of. So I hope I explained that pretty good for you. Let's go. Right. <laughs> from brother from down under said but gentlemen obama gave us hope it was yeah you're right but it wasn't until after he left it wasn't until after he left we realized what he meant by hope and change he said motherfucker i hope things change i didn't say that i was going to do it but i hope things change that's what he really meant let's go Shout out to my brother, Metho Nelson. Appreciate you, man, for that donation right there. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you for that support, and thank you for being here, right? So, gentlemen, uh-oh, hold on. Billingsley Meister, I hope I said that right. He says, I have Trezor, Ledger, Internet Money Wallet, and Oculus. Oh, man, he says, not your keys, not your coins. You are speaking facts Billingsley Meister, you are speaking true facts. Gentlemen, if Coinbase, like I told you, I use Coinbase to purchase cryptocurrency. And as soon as I'm able to take it off of there, I send it immediately to my decentralized wallet. And this is why governments hate that shit, because they want to be able to steal from you. 
and they don't have access to that. Guys, y'all see all day they sending y'all bullshit emails. Oh, your your Coinbase wallet has been compromised. Click this link if you want to get back into it. And they hope you're stupid enough to do that. They are fishing for your information. They are hoping to find your your documents. They're hoping to find any information that will lead them to your crypto accounts. That's what this is all about. You know what I'm saying? That is what this is all about. So do not answer any of these bullshit emails. Do not respond to these bullshit ass numbers. Do not respond to none of these dumb ass uh, text messages, right? Do not do any of that because they are trying to find ways into your account, right? Most dudes that get caught up, they will admit to you, I was stupid. I let them have access. I click the link. You know what I'm saying? And once you click the link, you let them in. They get to search all your stuff and find some details that will lead you to that. But I tell you what, decentralized exchanges, they do not get hacked. The only way somebody loses their money is when they let people in. They click buttons. They click stuff. That's how it happens, right? Let's go. So like I said, anything centralized, you you take, you buy the crypto, and when you're able to get it and send it to your wallet, you do that immediately. Shout out to Shada Zulu. Shadow Zulu, he says, uh, you know, safe trip to Thailand. Let's go. He says, uh-oh. Oh, it's Master Tactics. Oh, let's go, man. What happened? Why they why they did you dirty, bro? Let me find out. They out here doing you dirty, man. Appreciate that cash app, brother. Thank you for that support, right? So let's keep this going, man. Guys, when, when, when Bitcoin runs, everything runs. That's why we're so excited. And gentlemen, I love Bitcoin. I will, I will be the first to tell you I love Bitcoin. I love Ethereum. But your victory... Your millionaire status comes from the altcoins. I can't tell you what to invest in. I can't tell you how to invest. Like I always say, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. But I will tell you to do your due diligence, to do your research, to investigate, to pay attention to what these coins do. Pay attention to those ISO 222 coins. Pay attention to the coins that these uh, institutions are involved in now. So, for instance, you got EDX that was created by Citadel and Fidelity and a couple other companies. And they're focused on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash and, um, you know, uh, what is that? Litecoin. So, while I can't tell you, hey, you probably need to buy those, I would tell you definitely you want to take a look at them. The fact that the SEC wants to, um, who wanted to, Go after Solana after it went after XRP. These are things that you want to pay attention to because we all know anything the government hates, I love. You already know. Let's go. Let's go. So let's keep this going, guys. Check this headline out, everybody. Look at this headline. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust is now listed on the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation with the ticker IBTC. Can we get those fire emojis? Are we going to be fucking rich or not? Put a fire emoji if we are. Are we going to be fucking rich or not? Gentlemen, they're preparing. We have gotten no news. We've gotten no information that these uh, ETFs were approved. Nobody has released any news, but they are getting in position to prepare. They are getting in position. They're preparing for this shit. They're in the depository trust in the clearing corporation, basically queuing it up. We haven't gotten any news or information, but they told you. Don't invest in this. It's linked to terrorism. But look at what they're doing. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're getting ready for. But that old bastard just told you 
that crypto is being t- linked to terrorism. But here we are, and they're letting you know, if you are smart enough to ignore the noise and the bullshit, congratulations, welcome to the 1%. Because they're getting prepared. They are preparing for the next iteration of finance. And anybody who is here, anybody who has joined us on this journey, congratulations, you're going with them. But if you are listening to the bullshit, they caught us already with Bitcoin. They caught us. We could have been had a bunch of it. But they caught us. They told us it was criminal. They linked it to the Silk Road and all this bullshit. So we thought, oh, man, if I get some of that, I'm a criminal. They got us with Bitcoin. They're not going to get us again. They're not going to get us again. Look at this shit. They getting ready. Let's go. I want to start here and just discuss what's happening right now. This is huge breaking news. It looks like the Bitcoin spot ETF is truly imminent. I know it's kind of a popular popular word to use, but it is. It's looking that way. So hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let's break down this news. Let's pivot over to Bitcoin charts. Break that down as simple, as quickly as, pos- as possible. And let's start here with Eric. Guys, it's not a question of if it's going to happen. It's a question of when it's going to happen. And you know, listen, listen. You don't have to believe me. You can say, you know, I don't think the um, this shit is going to happen. But why is why are we seeing this right now? Gentlemen, they got to get in position before the Bitcoin having happens. They have to get in now. They have to do this now because they have to be ready for the Bitcoin having. They can't be just getting prepared when it get ready to happen, they have to be in place. Let me know if that makes sense or if I'm talking crazy. The reason they need these ETFs approved in the in right now is because they have to have these things set up and in place before the having. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you guys? So, like I said, They have to get this started now. They don't have time to waste. They can't wait. They need to have it in place so when the having starts and the numbers start running, they need to already be there. That's why crypto is starting to wake up. The having is, I think, in March or April sometime, T. Rutledge. It's in March or April. So they have to be in place before that happens. They have to set up shop now. They have to get these things going now. And you're going to see a major influx come in as soon as you get the word that it is approved. As soon as they tell you officially that the, um, what you call it, okay, brother from down under is confirming April, right? But basically what they're doing is, once they confirm, once they confirm, um, you know, that the Bitcoin ETFs are up and running and functional, guys, you're going to see a major influx of money before the having even happens. It's going to be fucking crazy. You guys are going to be financially free. Iman Perry put the exact date. He says... April 24th, 2024. I see you, Iman Perry. I see you, bro. He said April 24th, 2024. I'm rocking with you, bro. I'm rocking with you. Right? Dude said right uh, right after Valentine's Day. What you talking about, bro? Right? So, yeah, man. Um, So... This right here, they're getting set, they're getting in place, they're putting everything together because they know that they have to be in position before Bitcoin even thinks about having. And that's what this is about. So you guys are about to have an excellent experience 
because this shit right here is about to go parabolic. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Um, I see you, Omar Blacksmith, but um, I don't think there's any word on on Gary Gensler getting fired, right? So we left with this. So let's keep going, guys. Doc Kunes breaking it down very nicely. The iShares Bitcoin Trust has been listed on the DTCC, which is the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, clears NASDAQ at trades, and the ticker will be IBTC. Again, all parts of the process of bringing ETFs to market. Look. There you go. So, guys, I think Gary Gensler gave the green light. I think that they just haven't reported it in the news, right? Red Star in the building, he said, this ain't no Taylor Swift. This shit is right here. <laughs> hey, let's go, man. Let's go. You speaking facts, right? So, guys, this shit is a done, in my opinion, this shit is a done deal. I think what they're doing right now is they are basically putting everything in motion. I think they did not want to let us know that it was a done deal. They don't want to put out the news that Gary Gensler has approved spot Bitcoin ETFs because they don't want us excited. They don't want us excited. So, guys, they're showing you right here, man. It's about to get real fucking crazy out here. It's about to get real crazy out here. You guys are about to see financial freedom. Man, listen, you are about to be fucking rich. You are about to be fucking rich, man. Let's keep this going. Look at this. This is just developing very recently. So he goes on. I, I wanted to read this. thought it was kind of funny. IBTC is def a boring ticker considering the options, but it fits BLK brand. They more straight up, they're more straight up the middle and arguably better than something like HODL if the goal is to make it into client accounts of rich boomers who use wealth managers. So long story short, if we want those trillions, if we want those trillions coming coming in, one of those avenues via the spot Bitcoin ETF, maybe HODL isn't the best ticker. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? We want those trillions coming in. This is what it is. Guys, y'all are going to be so fucking rich, man. Man, put a fire emoji if you understand what's happening right now. Put a fire emoji if you understand what's happening right now. If this shit makes sense to you, if you understand what they are doing, what they are getting prepared for. Gentlemen, this is, is this not what we've been talking about all this time? Remember when all the motherfuckers was talking crazy to us? We didn't know what we was talking about. Remember that? Let's go. This is what it is. No, Bovine, it's not going to be on Trade and View. This is just basically getting prepared, putting things in motion. It's not available yet, right? It's not available yet. It's just getting everything in place so they can get started with this next Bitcoin bull run, right? But when they officially announce, you already know it's going to go parabolic. It's going to go crazy. You already know. Let's go. So, guys, this is what it is. You are going to be so fucking rich. It's going to be incredible, man. It's going to be incredible. Guys, this is what we have been waiting for. I'm so excited. We've been here from the beginning. We've been talking about this for so long. And here we are. Here we are. Let's go, man. This is first Spot ETF listed on DTCC, none of the others on there yet. Definitely notable. BlackRock is leading charge on these logistics seeding, the ticker DTCC, that tend to happen just prior to launch. What can I say, man? What else can I say? 
What else can we say, man? What else can we say? Everything is being put into place. This shit is imminent. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. It's imminent, man. They can't stop it. They can't stop it. This is what it is. Those major companies, they want their fucking trillions. They know if they drop all a, a big portion of their money in this, they are going to be trillionaires. You guys are going to be millionaires, and some of you are going to be billionaires. But they're going to be trillionaires. This shit is crazy. Hit the like button if you feel what I'm saying right now. Hit that like button. Let's keep it going. Imminent. Hard not to view this as them getting signal that approval is certain. Imminence. There it is, right there. So all of that happening, and it's kind of a big deal on, on crypto Twitter. At the same time, I saw this a little bit earlier. SEC commissioner says spot Bitcoin ETF should have been approved five years ago. That says so much, everybody. The Yo, guys, I want y'all to remember that face, right? Not for not for beauty purposes, but just remember her face because I'm about to show you something based on what he just put up, right? Let's go. Here we go. Next. So y'all saw what homie just did. Y'all saw who he put up. Check this out, guys. Next guest, uh, outspoken critic of some of her own agencies' initiatives. Uh, join us to talk about crypto regulation, debates over ESG, and so much more. SEC Commissioner Hester Purse. She is one of two Republicans among the five SEC commissioners. Good morning to you. Uh, love to get your sense of where you think uh, the state of some of these regulations around crypto really stand right now. There's been so much speculation, even in the past several weeks, about where uh, a Bitcoin ETF uh, might land. There was a, a moment, as you uh, I'm sure recall, where uh, a report came out erroneously, apparently, uh, that one would be approved. That would be the, the BlackRock uh, one. But a view that given some of the things that have happened in court recently with the SEC losing, uh, that maybe the SEC is now more open uh, to approving one of these types of uh, funds. Is it? Well, good morning, Andrew. And I can't I can't say whether or not the, the commission is is ready to approve a Bitcoin exchange traded product. I've been thinking we should approve one for the last five years. Let's stop right there. Now, before we get into the money business, hold on. Guys, ten thousand dollars. Somebody offered you ten thousand. But you had to smash this chick like she was the ultimate baddie. You had to look her in her face. And you had to basically, you know, make love to this chick for 10 racks. Are you doing it? Put a one if yes. Put a two if no. Basically, you got to make love to her like she the baddest chick ever. You got to look her face to face. You got to do all of that. You got to put your head between the legs. All of that, bro. For 10 racks. Put a one if you do it. Put a two if you can't. Let's go. Oh, Mr. O with the info set. I'm doing this. <laughs> Ray God Beat said no. Brandon H said no. Ken, Ken said yes, he doing it. Producer for real, hold on. He said no. World Blockchain Capital say 10 grand. Yes. <laughs> Y'all doing it for 10 racks? <laughs> so last D said, you're sick, man. <laughs> oh no. CC said he doing it. James Mitchell you said, oh, he you wrong. Oh my God. World Blockchain Capital say he doing it. Urban Warrior Gamer say, yep. He said, and put my 10K in XRP. He said, I'm doing it. Yo, Emmanuel McConnell, he's not doing it. St. Maurice said, no. Um, brother, brother from down under said, give me a mask like on Pornhub. Nah, no mask, bro. You got to look her in the face. You got to kiss her. You got to look. Yo, she, she going to get on top. She going to be looking down at you. All of that. You got to put your face between the leg. You got to give her the baddie treatment, man. 
what you would do to one of the baddest chicks that you were like, oh my God, if I get a chance with this woman, whatever she want, I'm going to do. You got to do that with her for 10 racks, bro. Let's go. Let's go. L Capital say, yeah, he doing it. Kid say, he doing it. <laughs> Let's go, man. Uh, 1914 say, he doing it, bro. Right? <clears throat> Let's go. My man, World World Blockchain Capital said 10 grand is to buy a third of Bitcoin. I hear you. He said, oh, he said, nah, 10. He said, Bitcoin. He says, I'll do it. <laughs> Let's go. Michael Thomas said, no. Glenn Houston is down with it. He from uptown. He said, yeah, I could easily. Uh, I had I had way worse. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. But here's the thing, he from Uptown, with the way worse, I'm pretty sure it was doggy style, right? I'm pretty sure it was doggy style. With this one, you got to make love to this chick. You got to go slow. You got to you gotta put it on up, bro. Let's go. So, yeah, I see y'all, bro. I see y'all. I see y'all. But guys, this question, this is the type of situation and scenarios that them chicks be getting getting put in, right? They be like, yo, shorty, I'll pay you 50 racks. You let me take a dump on you. Those are the life decisions <laughs> chicks be making, son. <laughs> they be like, yo, you got to let me pee on you. You got to let me take a dump on your head. I'll pay you 50 racks. Let's go. So... That's the type of shit that chicks be dealing with. So that's why I brought up this scenario. Because this is an interesting looking woman. Well, woman, I ain't going to lie to you. This is an interesting looking woman. But guys, what she said. Nah, it ain't no James Mitchell. It's not a 20 second quickie. You got to make love to this chick. You got to put time in. You got to put work. It ain't no quickies. And you got to look her in the face. And you got to kiss her. And you got to go between the legs. You got to do all of that that you would do with a shorty that you are really feeling, bro. Let's go. Boss Don, I agree with you with, with that, with, with what these chicks be doing in Dubai. But they don't think that, bro. They go for the psychological damage. Because that's exactly what it is, psychological damage. You ain't going to never be able to be right with yourself after that pretty much they sell their souls for 50k right you know what i'm saying this is cjm said how long oh he I, I, like a good like a good 30 40 minute session bro a good 30 minute 40 minute session and you gotta go slow and the lights are on so you gotta see everything bro let's go <laughs> So, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. But let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it. Guys, this woman is saying, in her opinion, Bitcoin ETF should have been approved five years ago. That's her. That's her opinion. Yo, I'm so glad they wasn't. I'm so glad they wasn't because a lot of y'all wouldn't have made it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that it wasn't. I'm glad we've gotten to this point. I'm glad that a lot of you guys were able to get in before they made the run. Because damn. Damn, son. She said like five years ago. Guys, if they would have did that, crypto would be unreachable right now. Crypto would be unreachable right now. Let's go. Crypto would be unreachable right now. Let's go. All right, let's keep it going. So the, the logic for why we haven't has always mystified me. Uh, the court case obviously is, is an important factor in the landscape, but um, I can't guess as to my colleague's approach to this topic. What she is ultimately saying is, listen, she knows that it has everything to do with melanated men pretty much circumventing what they had planned for us in 2053. She noticed that's what it is. But she's like black rock and all of them. She's like, listen, man, 
if they know they know why the fuck you so hell bent on trying to keep these people out it's it's nowhere near as many of them as it is with the corporations and stuff when the corporations get in anybody who's not in cryptocurrency is forever locked out that's the bottom line if you're not in cryptocurrency at the time that it starts running when the corporations drop their money if you're not in at that time you are locked out you are done you know what i'm saying Let's go. You are you are locked out if you don't get in at that time. I see you subsequently. He says, oh, hey, you sound like Patrice O'Neill. Would you fuck a chick with a hole in her face? Nah, like a skeleton. <laughs> oh, my God, man. That's terrible. That is terrible. That is terrible, right? <clears throat> um. James Mitchell says she want me to look down at the top of her. Now nah, you got to look her in the face. You got to look her in the face, bro. It's all face action. Bottom line. Right. But yeah, man. So what she is saying is they should have been past that. But I'm glad that they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. Because if not, a lot of us would not have made it to this point. Now you guys have financial freedom. Think about it. Before this shit all we had was work. All we had was retirement. All we had was bullshit pensions. All we had was struggle. All we had was overdraft fees. All we had was, you know, basically getting taxed to death. That's all, right? Rich Goodson in the building, he said, you can't get it doggy style or you can't. <laughs> he said, you can get it doggy style or you can get it lying down on your side those are your only two choices he says this is my house and i get to say no nah, no nah, this is is uh got it he said from the movie this boy's life oh nah but in this case you can't bro you can't bottom line is you want the 10 racks you gotta make love to her you gotta go slow you gotta do the long joint the long stroke you gotta look her in the face you gotta kiss her you gotta do all of that bro Ain't no doggy, ain't no sideways. It's missionary, bruh. It's missionary. Look her in the face. Let's go. Let's go. So that's it. Nope. Only 10K. That's it. Only 10K. You can't get 100K. It's only 10K, bro. If it was 100K, everybody would do it. I know it. If it was 100K, everybody would do it, right? And the lights are going to be on. You got to see everything. You got to see who you doing it to. You heard? Let's go. <laughs> Boys died. Let's go. I see you, bro. But you hear this chick. She is basically saying they should have did it a long time ago. And you know what? If the United States wasn't so arrogant, they would have. Right? If they wasn't so arrogant, they would have. Because what it would have done is it would have kept so many people out of crypto. You could have locked us out. But I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't because we here now. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's keep it going. But uh, the reason I ask is there's a, a sort of a speculative fever taking place throughout Wall Street and other parts of the crypto world that believe that given uh, those court uh results or those, those loss those losses if you will or specifically that one loss that it would change the um thinking of the other commissioners uh, at the sec you spend time with them you talk to them do you see any shift in terms of that type of thinking just even generally speaking i i really can't speak to what we're going to do on the bitcoin exchange traded products i can say that generally the agency has not been very good when it comes to anything related to bitcoin or other crypto assets and look i hope that every day every day i i hope that they'll wake up and they'll think you know what we need to take a more productive approach that hasn't happened yet but i'm of course hoping that right. it will what this woman is saying these dudes are the old bitch in a club. They stuck in, in yesteryear and, and and they're trying to do everything to uh hold on to whatever little power they, they have left. 
That's what it is. It's desperation. Shout out to my brother DB. He says, Oheen, either smash her or sexy red. You got to choose. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I, oh, that is a punishment and a half. That's a punishment. I don't like either one of them, bro. Jesus. Jesus, but I, I, listen, I, I have to go with this chick because, um, sexy red look like young thug and that, that right there, uh. <laughs> she look like young thug I don't know what this chick look like But that chick That chick look like young thug And that would bother me I would feel like I'm smashing young thug So I can't do it I can't do that bro I cannot do that You know what I'm saying Jesus Christ I'm just saying Tell me, Tell me Sexy Red Don't look like young thug she look like young thug, bro. Jesus Christ. Right? So I, I have to I have to go with this chick, bro. Cause um I wouldn't be happy with either, but I can't be looking at a chick that look like young thug. That that should make me throw up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Truth over emotions and I have to talk toss back a half gallon of Everclear with no chaser. I hear you, bro. Right? But basically what this young lady is saying, she is basically saying, like, yo, my crew is behind. Their thinking is behind. And it's not, you know, what listen, man. Prejudice. And racism are very stupid elements, right? Prejudice and racism are very stupid elements. And I'll tell you why. Prejudice and racism, um, you know, basically it distracts you from truth. It it allows you to live in falsehoods. And and pretty much destroys everything. And I'll give you an, an example of that. The United States is in shambles currently. Why? Because their racism and their prejudice was so strong, they forgot to educate the children. They thought that they were going to set traps for the black community and it was only going to stay there. So they dropped crack cocaine. They dropped crypto, crystal meth. Uh, they they destroyed the education system. They basically dropped fast food and obesity and all of these things. And they thought that it was only going to stay in the black community. And when they turned around 20, 30 years later, they have a society of stupid people who don't know anything about tech, who don't know anything about science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Everything has to be outsourced now, right? Their prejudice and their racism was so blinding. They have drove the country literally into the ground because of their, their, their prejudice and their racism. They have such a strong hatred for the black community that they have destroyed their institutions. They have destroyed their children. Now their children are confused. They don't know what gender they are. They don't know who they are. They don't know what to believe. They're being uh, basically uh, railroaded in so many ways. Their racism blocked them. That's why every time you pick up the phone about some te technical issues that you're having with your computer or your television or, or your laptop or your cell phone, you hear somebody with from India, right? That's why. Um, so many countries are hacking into our systems. That's why so many of our um, accounts are being depleted by scam artists from other places because they learned technology. We don't know it because the racism was much stronger than the logic. Yo, we have to get our stuff in order because we're going to be left behind technologically. Their racism was so strong, they wanted to kill us in the medical system that they wanted us to be obese and weak and lazy. But look, nobody's joining 
the armed services anymore because they're overweight. They're out of shape. That was originally for us, but it's affecting everybody. Diseases that they threw out there for us are now affecting everybody. They threw crack cocaine out there for us, and now they are struggling and suffering from crystal meth. This is what racism and prejudice does. And this is why the United States is behind in the finance world, because they were so busy trying to keep black people poor and at the bottom, they forgot, hey, we need to uh, get into this crypto Feel we need to, you know, they're so busy trying to stop us from getting into it. The rest of the world is moving without them. Shout out to Gerald Jokes. Appreciate that. He says, had to pull over to answer that question. She <laughs> giving me info to become rich. And hell yeah. He said, that's my girl, of course. Gin and Juice would be in the cabinet. He says, not to mention 10K. No brainer. Sup, chat? <laughs> I hear you, bro. I hear you. Right? My man, Steven X, appreciate that support, brother. Thank you for being here. Thank you, man. Right? So pretty much that prejudice, trying to keep black people at the bottom, trying to keep us at poverty, it made them, it basically brings them late to the game. It brings them late to the game. They are walking behind. Now, don't get me wrong. You know the American government is heavily invested in cryptocurrency. It's just they're spending a lot of energy and time trying to keep you out, which is pretty much making them late to the game. They want you poor and in poverty. They want you struggling, right? So that's what this is. They're trying to keep you in the background. That's what this is all about, right? Exactly. So let's keep it going, guys. But should I, I, I guess the question is, should the public take anything away from the fact that a BlackRock or a Fidelity or somebody of that size, scale, perhaps reputation uh, is applying for these things, that that somehow is validating uh, this space in a way that perhaps maybe some of the smaller firms that had applied uh, for such types of funds earlier uh, did not? The answer is yes, but the thing is, the you know the old retail investor is dead, and this is what's killing them because the old retail investor used to listen to them. The old retail investor believed what they said. The new retail investor does not give a shit about what they're talking about. The new retail investor says, no, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get in this game and I'm going to invest this money because basically everything, we are not paying attention to what they say. We're watching what they do. They tell you that it's connected to terrorism, but BlackRock is getting a Bitcoin spot ETF. So I don't watch what they say. I watch what they do. Right. That's the bottom line. And I think they are afraid and I think they're very nervous and I think it bothers them that we have come this far. But the bottom line, gentlemen, is you guys are going to be incredibly fucking rich. You're going to be free. I told you, while I do not give financial advice, there is one thing I do give financial advice on. When you find yourself walking well out of the hundreds of thousands of dollars mark and you're walking in to the millionaire status, my financial advice is... Take out 250 racks. You're going to have to pay 50 racks up front in taxes. Pay that shit. Get the fuck out this country, right? You could go to so many other countries where you can live in a beachfront condo for like $90,000 or less, right? So that would be my first order of business. I would take out 250000 I'll pay my 50000 in taxes, and I would take that other two hundred. I would go buy me a condo for 90000 and I would let the rest sit as a safety net. That is financial advice, by the way. I, that is financial advice. I don't care what nobody says. That is my advice. If you find yourself walking into the millions or well into the millions, just take out 250 pay the quick 50 racks. I go right to the IRS and, and get them niggas a check. Here you go. This is the 50000 I got 250000 in my account. 
I took the 50,000 out. Here's your check. I'm out of here. And I would leave this place and never come back. That would be my advice. So, gentlemen, with that, I got to get ready to uh, head out in the morning. I'm going to NYC to see my family and say goodbye. And before I take the real trip over there to um, Thailand. So, um, I, I got, I'm going to have a busy week ahead of me. So, I'm getting started with that, man. Thank you guys for everything. Yo, I'm just so proud to be a part of this movement to know that, you know, listen, it's 212 of y'all here, man. Listen, if I make 212 millionaires, man, I can die a happy man. That would be my one of my greatest accomplishments that I've ever done. The only thing that will rival it is the birth of my children, which I'm planning on making soon. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to thank you guys for being here. Yo, did you guys see my new um, video on my on my channel? Crypto plus passports equals freedom. Put a yes or a no in the chat. Let me know if y'all seen that video yet. Um, hold on one second. Let me uh, copy that link because I want you guys to go see it. Um, if you guys didn't see it, I'm putting the link in the chat right now. Here you go. This is the link to the video. Definitely go over there, hit that like button, watch this video. Tell me what you think in the comments section. You know, it's about your boy Tyrese and his response to that chick. So definitely go over there, leave your comment. I can't wait to show y'all what I got in store for that new channel. It's going to be crazy, man. Go ahead and hit that link, watch that video, leave a comment, man. Let me know what you think. If you think it's dope, let me know. If you agree, let me know. If you don't agree, put that in there. Let's go. Um, let's go, family. So go ahead, watch that video, right? Let's go. Let's go. All right, so with that, gentlemen, thank you for being here, man. Thank you for all the support. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be on on Friday. It's depending on what's happening. You know, like I said, I'm going to be with the family. I'm going to be saying goodbye. So, um, depending on what happens with that, I might jump on for a few minutes to kick it with y'all, but if not, man, um, I, I, I'll try to, um, it's, it's going to be pretty hectic. So if y'all don't see me for a little bit, just know I'm making the trip to the other side so we can do it big in Thailand, man. I hope to see a lot of you guys there. Some of you brothers that's listening right now are already in Thailand. So we definitely got to meet up, um, because you know, I might need you. You guys out there, y'all might have to help me produce the show, you know, all that good stuff. So, you know, just, you know, we, we, we'll have to keep in touch. All right. So with that being said, man, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you guys when I can. I'll keep you updated and all of that good stuff. And until that gentlemen salute, we out of here. Peace.